I'm sure the previous builder's work is just fine, said no aircraft builder ever. Welcome back everybody. We had a short and not so sweet video today. Uh, a little bit of bad news. I basically have been talking to Carrie for the last week via email back and forth about the uh, the old one elongated hole I have here in the skin and um, through an idea at him I found some rivets online, structural rivets that were stainless steel, uh, five thirty seconds in the short grip range. I want to say uh, forty thousandths up to uh, eighth of an inch uh, grip range, which would be perfect because uh, between the skin and the uh, the rib material here, I want to say if I remember right, that's fifty six thousandths. Don't hold me to that, but uh, but it falls right in that spec. So. My brilliant idea is, I can't take 100% credit for it because it was suggested by a few people in the comments of the previous videos, was to upsize drill any oversized holes and just go the next size up rivet. And the one rivet hole here that was elongated wouldn't be a problem that it was compromised. The upsized uh, uh, rivet has a larger head. It would cover the full elongation. And that one individual rivet and the hundreds in the uh, stabilator would not be an issue. So it sounded like a brilliant plan. I bounced that idea off a of carry and he basically shot it down. Um, not in a negative way. He's been incredibly helpful. I am grateful for his knowledge and experience. Um, but the way it was explained to me was uh, they, they have no problem with people uh, replacing and upsizing rivets if you know you have to drill out a piece and a few, few uh, need to be done. It's not a big deal at all. But he also explained to me that if I could fit a number 29 drill, luckily I just happen to have a bunch in the machine shop, if I could fit the number 29 drill easily into the holes, then the holes are oversized, in fact, and uh, could be uh, compromising the integrity of the, uh, the design, the engineering, everything behind the, the uh, build. So I grabbed the number 29 drill bit and just started dropping it. Oh, hey, there's one that isn't. Oh, no, okay. So we didn't, these weren't riveted from there on down. But basically, I mean, not only is going in, but they're going in very, very freely. So either one of a couple things, either the holes are oversized drill to start with, or drilling out all those rivets um, does a lot more damage than I had thought or, or removes a lot more material than I had thought. So um, now normal eighth inch drill bit that you drill the uh, holes with is 125 thousandths. A number 29 drill bit is 135 thousandths. And if I just grab one or one of these random holes here and you know these are up around 155, 160 thousand, some of them, which would be okay for a 5.30 seconds rivet. In fact, they would re-drill, re, re burr and do them all was my plan. But uh, Carrie explained to me that they do not recommend, and, and, and in fact, they, they frown upon uh, people trying to do the whole piece over with larger size rivets. Uh, and I asked him because I thought the larger size rivets would be stronger, you know, because it's got a, well, it's, it's a thicker rivet. It's a bigger rivet. It has a larger head, has more clamping force, all of those things. 
in my mind, made it sound like uh, not only a good idea, but almost an improvement. It would improve the structural stability of the, uh, the stabilators, I, I thought. But the way it was explained to me by Carrie was for a couple of reasons. Uh, mainly, it can weaken the structure because A, you're removing more material. Um, B, the distance uh, from one side of the hole to the other is increased. So that kind of weakens the material and makes it uh, more flexible. Um, obviously, if you could just envision a, a uh, large plate of metal here with a small quarter inch hole in the middle, um, probably doesn't mess with its integrity at all. Now, let's say we take a, uh, the same plate of metal, say one foot square, and we were to drill an eight inch hole down the center of it, that piece would flex more. So I get it, that makes more sense. Um, I still, in the back of my mind, kind of think five thirty seconds rivets would be okay. And I believe that little difference wouldn't make that big of a difference. But the fact is I'm dealing with the manufacturer and they, these guys don't push to sell more parts or replacement parts ever. Um, with other topics I've talked to them about or whatever, if there's any sort of a, of a solution or a workaround, they're, they're happy to accommodate. So if these guys are stating that they don't think it is uh, a good idea and it could lead to problems down the road, I really got to follow that advice. So what I've done is uh, he sent me the complete component list for the entire uh, tail section. I want to say I think the current price on the tail section is uh, $1,800, $1,900 in that ballpark. Uh, I, luckily, I don't need all of it. Um, I need the, uh, the, the, the front and rear spar ribs or whatever you want to call them. Uh, I need the individual ribs. Uh, I basically need to replace these components right here and uh, the skins and uh, the hockey sticks because while I'm going that far, why not just bend two brand new hockey sticks from square one the right way and I'll never have to question that in the back of my mind. Uh, could that be compromised? Uh, so I'm waiting for them to uh, return me some numbers on the quote. I'm guessing that it's probably going to be in the ballpark of $1,000. Um, but I don't need uh, any of the components for the uh, rudder raiders. Um, I don't need the, the, uh, the wing tips. Um, a lot of other than the machined components, the thicker components that uh, build up some of the supports at the ends here. Uh, this can be reused even if that needs to be drilled out, upsized, riveted, one, one way or the other. That is such thick metal that that won't be a compromise. So that's it. It's uh, kind of a sad news story, but at the same time, I will get to build the plane essentially 100% myself now. I can't say 100% because there are a few things that Steve did, but you know, I'm going through those one by one, modifying, tweaking, repairing, whatever needs to be done. Uh, the only major components that he had built were the stable ears. So now that I'm doing those, I'm, I'm probably going to have uh, 95 plus percent of this plane will be 100% my work. So I don't all that math works but uh anyways i wanted to give you an update on that i'm not happy about it but i am happy about it i'm not happy about spending the money but i am happy about the satisfaction i'm going to gain and the the extra knowledge and experience and peace of mind associated with doing this all myself so yep short video uh nothing else to show here on this front and I'll keep you posted on what the costs are. I'll update that in a, in a future video, maybe when we start uh, assembling these. The good news is now you're actually going to get videos of the stabilator assemblies. So I guess you guys win.
uh, and that is if you enjoy watching my videos. Remember, if you do enjoy watching my videos, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's always a bit of a, of a boost for me, you know, gives me the feels, so to speak. And uh, please click the like button. You know, I don't care if you don't like the videos. Click that like button anyways, because that makes YouTube happy. And it gets the channel a little bit more exposure. And always be sure to share these videos with your other aviation friends. Thanks for watching.